Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to sketch out one version of a teleological theory of mental content as presented to us by Karen Neander in her paper, Biological Approaches to Mental Causation. In the next lesson, we'll look at some objections to this view. Here's the line of thought that we followed down this rabbit hole. Minds can be understood in terms of rationality. To have a mind is to be rational. To be rational is to act for reasons. Acting for reasons requires minimally that one's behavior is caused by such mental states as beliefs and desires. Beliefs and desires are intentional states. They're mental states that have content or aboutness. It follows that any system that has non-epiphenomenal intentional states is rational and thereby has a mind. Ignoring epiphenomenalism for the moment, a natural explanation of intentionality is, ipso facto, a natural explanation of the mind. Intentionality is a matter of having content, of being about something else. One thing is about another, has the other as its content, when the one thing carries information about the second thing in a way that's subject to the norms of correctness, when it can also misrepresent or have incorrect content. Where we left off in the last lesson is that this might be possible on a so-called asymmetric dependence theory of mental content, but that theory might need to be supplemented or replaced by an alternative theory. Recall the example of cow beliefs being caused by both cows and large dogs. According to the asymmetric dependence theory, what makes the cow beliefs about cows and not about large dogs is that they play the cow role in the system. And they don't play the large dog role because cow beliefs depend on cows differently than they depend on large dogs. Namely, they would not be caused by large dogs were they not already caused by cows, but not vice versa. Here's another answer to the same question. Why are cow beliefs about cows and not large dogs, even though they're sometimes caused by large dogs? Roughly speaking, the answer is that cow beliefs have the purpose of indicating the presence of cows, and they don't have the purpose of indicating the presence of large dogs. And this is what makes them have cows as their content and not large dogs as their content. Put another way, they're supposed to be caused by cows, and they're not supposed to be caused by large dogs. What could we mean when we say that cow beliefs have the purpose of indicating cows, or that they're supposed to be caused by cows? Doesn't that sound quite a bit like the old Aristotelian theory that the Earth is supposed to try to get to the center of the universe and the quintessence has the purpose of moving in perfect circles? Didn't Galileo and Newton show us that it was wrongheaded and we should not appeal to physical explanations in terms of the purposes, goals, or telos of a thing? Didn't we get rid of teleological explanations? Yes, that's all right. But the advocates of teleological theories of intentionality argue that we're not letting mysterious Aristotelian purposes or goals back into our theories. Instead, we can appeal to an entirely natural and biological notion of purpose or function that is already part of biology. For example, we don't hesitate to say that hearts are for pumping blood or that bird wings are for flight. Pumping blood is the purpose or function of hearts and enabling flight is the purpose or function of wings. This much is relatively uncontroversial. It's slightly more controversial within biology to explain exactly what biological functions are and where they come from. But one of the most widely accepted theories of biological function is the selected effect or SE account that Neander embraces. The details are important, but the general picture is enough for our purposes, no pun intended. According to the selected effect account of function, the function of a trait is that effect that the trait had in the ancestors of its current bearers that explains why that trait was maintained or increased in the population over time. As Neander puts it, a trait is said to have a natural function X if traits of that type were selected for Xing by a natural, and here that means non-intentional, process of selection. So to a first approximation, according to an SE theory, a trait is functioning properly if it has the capacity to do that for which traits of its type were selected, and it malfunctions if it lacks that capacity. On this view, the function or purpose of a trait is to do what it was selected to do. Hearts pump blood, wings enable flight. Noses have the function of enabling breathing, but they don't have the function of holding up spectacles, although they do that. The former is something for which they were selected by natural selection, but not the latter. Shifting back to the mind, 
The idea will be that a certain mental state is about cows rather than about large dogs because it has the function of indicating the presence of cows, guiding cow-directed behavior and whatnot. That's what it is to do the cow belief job. Of course, we don't expect that natural selection fixed our beliefs specifically on cows, much less on televisions or electrons. What teleological theorists would generally want to say is that the whole mental system is selected to enable certain kinds of interactions with the world, and the particular mental states get their particular contents through development and learning. You might want to say, for example, that our brains have, among other things, the function of enabling us to acquire linguistic capacities. But of course, whether you acquire your capacities in English rather than French or Mandarin or Swahili is a matter of the environment or the environments in which you were raised and educated. Similar stories might be told about bird songs or about salmon spawning grounds and so on. Natural selection gives us a general capacity, the details of which then depend on how that capacity develops in each concrete organism. At this point, I hope you have a general understanding of how teleological theories of intentionality or teleosemantic theories of content are supposed to go. And I hope you can see that they arise as possible answers to the question about which causal relations in the world might explain intentionality and mental content. And those questions are themselves following upon a line of inquiry that starts with attempts to understand human minds in terms of rationality and rationality in terms of intentional content. Before you proceed to the next lesson, take a look at sections four to five from Karen Neander's paper, Biological Approaches to Mental Representation. In the final lesson for this week, we'll look at how she presents and responds to some criticisms of the teleosemantic approach. Then, looking ahead to next week, think about what the teleological job or purpose of mental states might be. We're going to read a short article by Zoe Drayson in which she discusses a few different approaches to that question.